Okay, good day of off-roading, time for a drink. Thomas said that this had a bottle opener, like the Bronco Sport did. On the Bronco Sport, it was here. I guess it's just some sort of new Ford tech. James, what on earth are you doing? You said it had a bottle opener, like the Bronco Sport. Yes, it has a bottle opener, but first of all, that's not how you open a bottle. And second of all, the bottle opener is up on the C pillar here. Here you go. Try again, okay? Where is it? It's right there. Just use it normally. I, okay. Thomas, I'm really, these bottle openers are crap. Baja mode. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. Uh. And that is the new Ford Bronco. Yeah, it looks cool. It looks so cool. Look Real how big cool. it is. It's big. It it's is big. really wide, it's actually. It's quite a different car to the Bronco Sport. Did, did you see me? I saw the water. In the mid the water? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was, was really cool. It looked like the log flume. I felt, I felt really awesome doing it. Yeah, even yeah. in that shirt. Um, so I've got the Rubicon. You do. Which matches you your... Hold on, hold on. You have the 4xE though. Why did you bring that? Well, the 4xE is just the engine choice. Yeah. Right? It's still got all the Rubicon stuff. And yes. the 4xE is more powerful than the most powerful Bronco. And more fuel efficient. And I'm not even going to talk about the 392 V8, which you can get this with. There's, uh, a, there's a lot of engine options to this, which is very cool. There is, there is a lot. It's young. Give it time. Yeah, how's the fuel economy? No, no, what? <laughs> no good. It doesn't have any. <laughs> it's just like 13 liters for 100 kilometers on the highway. On Either the way, way we have brought the right trims. Yes. You, you got Sasquatch, Rubicon. Yeah, so we got all the locking diffs. Well met, good sir. We've got the big wheels. Yeah, tires. big tires. Yep. I think you've got bigger tires than me. I have the 33s. 30, I thought they were yeah. 35s. You, yes, they're right, the 35s, because they're even bigger, yeah. Okay, um, can we go off-roading? Let's do it. Let's do yeah. it. All right, we're still in Baja mode right now. Still in four high. So I've been living with this, and uh, you know what? It's really great. It turns so nicely in the city because it's got the independent front suspension. It's, it's really, really easy to drive. I will say that everyone's been saying that it's really quiet and it's a lot quieter than the Wrangler. I'm not sure that's true. In fact, we tested it with the decibel meter and they're both pretty much exactly 77 decibels on the highway at 100 kilometers an hour. I, I will say that the top makes quite a lot of noises. Honestly, this is a really nice car to live with. And that's because, unlike the solid front axle in the Wrangler, this has independent front suspension and rack and pinion steering. So on the highway, it tracks straight, doesn't wander, and is easy to cruise with. But don't worry, it's still a serious off-roader. It has locking differentials, off-road drive modes, a low-range gearbox, and even though the wild track trim, which was graciously provided by Connor and the team at Kitchener Ford, doesn't get the disconnecting sway bar like the Badlands does, it should have no problem showing this Wrangler that you can live in comfort and crush a trail like this one. Okay, so yeah, the, the Bronco is probably the better road car, but this is a Wrangler. And that means something. First, unlike the Bronco, it didn't just show back up in our lives after going out for a packet of cigarettes 25 years ago. It has been fording through rivers and scaling mountains and parking in Trader Joe's non-stop since 1986. And its CJ routes take it back to 1944. Second, not only can you get the Wrangler with a Hemi V8, you can also get it in the form of America's newly best-selling plug-in hybrid vehicle, the Wrangler 4xE, which we have today paired with the 8-speed automatic gearbox. And unlike the mileage that Thomas has been getting in his Bronco, this thing has amazing fuel economy. It's actually terrible! <laughs> okay, it's not terrible, but it's not good. In fact, the 4xE is middling in the range of Wranglers. In fact, I think if it weren't for the 392, it might actually be the worst. And that's probably because of all the electric weight. However, and it's a bit of a specific use case, because of the electric system, 
This has 35 kilometers, 21 miles of electric only range. So if you're someone whose commute to work is less than that, then you can off-road on the weekends and cruise to work silently. But not silently for you, because it's still, it's still quite loud in the cabin. There's a lot of tire noise, a lot of wind noise. But this thing's pretty quick. 0 to 60 in six seconds. And people who have removed the roof and the doors have managed to get less than that. But that's on the road. Today's all about off-road. We switched our vehicles into the correct off-road modes and hit the trail. And the first thing I noticed about the Bronco was it's not as dainty as the Wrangler. This feels wide. Last time I was coming through here, it was in our Forerunner, which is our camera car right now. Didn't feel this wide. Okay, yep, up a little hill, up a little hill. There we go. Oh yeah, this is, this is easy for the Bronco, easy. It's weird to off-road electric only. How many other vehicles can boast that they have a V8 and a plug-in hybrid in their lineup and then be able to go and off-road? Perfectly managing the electric torque here. All right, take that back. Bit of a bit of a push there. So I'm in four low, electric only. The Wrangler made good use of its EV mode, and to be honest, so far it wasn't a challenge for these trucks at all. They made rock and mud and dirt feel like pavement. All right, I've clicked off-road pages. Now Thomas is leading the way, but anything he can do, I can do Wrangler. James went a different way. What's he doing? Just because that's new, doesn't mean he's first. Ah, uh, ah, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, you son of a- Wrangler's been leading the way for decades. Should lead the way here. With James now rudely in front of me, we started to pick up the pace a bit and whenever possible, tested the limits of our trucks. I could swallow a meal to hold that puddle. It falls away. Any concern about how this drives on the highway falls away once you get on the trail. It's a specialized car. That's what it's for. You don't complain that a Miata doesn't have two rear seats. You don't complain that a Huracan's roof is low. When cars are specialized, they get to be the best versions of what they are. And the crossovers we've driven recently, although a lot of them would be very capable at this trail, I think the Bronco Sport would have no trouble. They, they're trying to do all things for everyone. And as a result, unless you're paying top dollar, and even when you pay top dollar, as we found with the Aston Martin DBX, they don't quite do everything 100%. And that's where the Wrangler and the Bronco just crush this. So far then, the trail had presented neither vehicle nor driver with any significant challenge. We had become masters of our fate, dominators of nature. Unfortunately, that wasn't quite true for our cameraman, Carsten. <laughs> oh no! Oh no, Carsten, what are you doing? Did Carsten just try and run through the puddle? Okay, <laughs> oh. He's great at editing. Navigating puddles, not so much. <laughs> we continued to play around with the limits of our trucks, and honestly, if you've never gone off-roading, it might seem slow, but speed oh. isn't the only thing that'll pucker your starfish. 15, 16, 17, 18, oh, oh. Oh, that's real scary. 21, 22, uh, I've dropped the walkie-talkie. 23, I've pooped my pants. I've contributed to the puddle. Uh, 17, 7, 18, yeah, I, do, I don't have any more, there's nothing there. Thomas, I feel like the hardcore off-roaders watching this are going to think, 23 degrees, I do 36 degrees leaving my driveway. That is 100% what they're going to say, yeah. 
As we got further into a point where we couldn't turn around, we realized that the rain the previous day had left a little treat. Uh, Thomas, there's a very big puddle in front of us. Like, very big. It's just, it's a puddle. It's a puddle. You said, you even said it yourself. It's not like it's a lake or a river. Just go. You're fine. Yeah, but on te Lake Ontario is a lake. It looks like an ocean. This is... Okay. Was it? Oh god. Oh, oh, I'm out. That looks shallow, Jake. <laughs> you did it? Because I might have cleared some water out for you if you find it easier. Alright, here I go. No problem. I'll even do it slowly. Oh, Arcade not available. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <Brock. laughs> that, that was pretty deep. That was pretty deep. Yeah, I don't think I'd want to go any deeper than that without a snorkel, to be honest. But you're you're protected inside the car. Why would you need a snorkel? I know that he knows what a snorkel is. <laughs> Puddles conquered, we came to a clearing, only to find that our next obstacle was a long, steep, and boulderous climb. That's a road, technically. I think maybe it just looks vertical. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. It, it, it probably looks a little bit worse than it is. Yeah. But, like, it's, it's, it's perspective. We did a big puddle. That's not... Uh, we did do a big puddle. Huge puddle. It was massive, really. Now, is that good enough, or do you want to? Uh, no, we, we, we gotta do. We gotta know. Also, technically, we need to get to the other side to be able to get back to our. I'm our not worried base. about my abilities. Do you know what I mean? No, I mean, <laughs> I, my limits will never be reached. It's the car. Listen, I know these can do that in yeah. my in my heart, and I hope in reality that's also true. So I guess I'll go first. You should turn back now. That's okay. Turn back. We now. can do it. All right, Thomas is gonna lead the way. A lot of big, like fist-sized stones in the ground, which isn't actually making this that easy. <laughs> uh, maybe we should leave a bit of a gap. What's your name? Well, if I get stuck and I have to back down, don't like get, like let me go up the hill first. Oh, so you think you're gonna get stuck now? I don't have that feeling in this. Here we go. It's getting a little bit steep, but nothing, nothing we can't handle, you know. No snow. <laughs> okay. Ooh, this diff just cleared a rock. I don't want to hit the diff on that rock there. All right, it's about to get really difficult. I think I need some speed. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. Avoid the rocks. Avoid the rocks. Oh, that's a lot of... I have a wheel in the air for sure. I have a wheel in the air for sure. Locking diff. Coming in handy. <laughs> oh, it's like helping crawl me forward. Oh, ho, 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 buddy. There we go. Yes. Woo! <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> All right, James. Let's see what you got. Okay, my turn. Coming up. Ah, oh, it's a big rock. Take the diff at all costs. 
Over the rock. Yeah, I went over it. The other side. Okay. I think I'm going to need some momentum here. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, it's some pitch. 22 degrees pitch. All right. All right. Where's my high five? Yes. Too slow. Oh, <laughs> Back in school. I feel like I won twice there. <laughs> Why am I walking up when I have a truck? All right. <laughs> we did it. We did it. How cool is that? That's really cool. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay, so here's the problem. Is that, like, while it felt maybe extreme to, to me. Yes, and um, then. Yeah, I just yeah. don't think that... We, the, the, it was technical enough to show which one of these was actually better. Do you no, know what I mean? The, I think the closest we came was your... I almost watched your rear diff connect with a rock. That was just bad driving. Just bad. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing to do... I agree. Yeah, I agree. to do with the, with the Bronco. But yeah, the, the limits of these cars are so high. Yeah, honestly, the only thing that held this back was literally just its width. It's, it's really massive. I think, right? I think I would have liked to try a V8. Just yeah? to see, just yeah? to see, yeah. It is pretty cool that you're just like putting around in EV mode though. EV mode's great, it goes really silent, you can yeah. really hear the branches scratching the paint, and, <laughs> and, but, yeah. but it is a bit touchy. Yeah, okay, so the only complaint that I have about this is pretty much um, in terms of the drivetrain. No, I take about that, I don't really have one. Like even no. with the 10 speed, yeah. on the road, it sometimes it feels like it can't figure out what gear it wants to be in. Totally fine off-road. It, like, it felt like it was calibrated just for off-road. And then on-road, it's like, just when are we turning? When are we turning into a trail? Yes. What, oh, so what so color cool. was this? I don't, I don't know the name of the color, honestly. It's like a blue-gray. Right now, it's brown. Poor knowledge. That was a test he failed. It's <laughs> Area 51. Oh, my God. You know? Why do you know the color of my car? You know, Area 51's been very important on the internet in the last year. So it's just, it's just front of mind. <laughs> okay. It looks really... Really cool. I've said it the whole time I was driving. It just looks so cool. This is one of like the coolest looking trucks on the road it's right big. now. It's big. You look small against it. It is actually a very big look. vehicle. It's long, especially the Forder, obviously. This is the Wild Track, right? So this, this comes standard with the, Sa the Sasquatch package. It comes standard with the Sasquatch package, which is what gives you the, uh, the big uh, tires and wheels, that, like the, the, the beadlock ready wheels, gives you the Bilstein suspension yeah. and some more, you know, kind of off-roady things. However, I've been reading the forums. Okay. And apparently... So you're a Bronco guy now. I'm a Bronco guy now. Yeah. Um, apparently, th this isn't the way to do it if you're going to go off-roading because this is filled with carpet on the inside. Right. Well, nice. Yes. If you go one trim down and get the Badlands, then you get the f rubber floors with the drain. Oh, so you can murder people. You can... <laughs> Spill stuff. Yes. That's, Spill there stuff. it is. Yeah. And, and wash them out with a hose. And then you option the Sasquatch package on top. Oh, okay. They're actually calling it the Bad Squatch. I feel like that. They, they think that sounds cooler than, <laughs> yeah, than it is. It's not actually that cool. It is ge what do we do with this genius? It looks just like bad well, this Sasquatch. looks like a Ram Wrangler Rubicon. It does, with some blue trim around well, it. Well, the blue is, is to signify the electric electricity. Yes, uh, yes. Because I have this plug here, don't I? And, 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 your, and, oh yeah, and your doors come off. And my the doors, doors come, come off. off? Yes. OK, so I want to talk about this. You, I think you win that one, don't you? Uh, I, I win because I can roll the window down and they're frameless. So, and the, these are cowl mounted wing mirrors. Yes. So, so that you just take the door off. Just the door. Whereas, and, and I can store the doors in, in the truck. Yeah. That's Whereas really cool. The Wrangler, it's the whole door and the wing mirror and it's not frameless. Yes. So, now, however, yeah. your, your bolts that you have to remove are out here. Yeah. Mine are in the, they're in the hinge. So you, it's a little bit more annoying. They give you a toolkit. Okay. It's a little more annoying to actually open them. And I will say that, like, I know the doors come off, but the doors come off in this thing in the same way that the doors come off in any car, in yes. that if you unbolt them, but the doors come off. Yes, but it's there's, a, there's easy. an easy release on the electricity, right? Yeah, it's just a wiring harness. Most doors have a wiring harness that you undo. I'm intimidated by wiring harnesses. And, and, <laughs> and also, the fact that you can store them, and then this has side air bag curtains. Yes, this doesn't. This, this is actually one of the few vehicles on the road today that doesn't have side curtain No, but it's got cool vents. <laughs> it has cool vents. It's got they'll cool vents. they'll and... save you when you get hit by a semi. And the windscreen folds down. The windscreen yes. folds down. Yes. Doesn't do it in that. No, it doesn't. So I guess technically, if we both rolled over rolling up this hill, I would have been trapped in there for all eternity. No, I would also be trapped. 
Because the windscreen wasn't down before. No, and also I don't know how to put it down. <laughs> but it can be done. Yes. From the rear, it, yeah, I said yours looks like a Wrangler from the rear. They're yes. very similar. Yes. Same, same sort of. Same sort of open door and then the, the glass that flips yeah. up. Um, no, it's, listen, these are both unbelievably cool vehicles. But However. This is better on the road. This is better on the road. And right now it's cooler because it's newer. Yes, but take away the fact that this is really like new and neat and we all love it. Yeah. Objectively, driving yes. it here, it was more comfortable. I've lived with a Rubicon for like a couple weeks. Well, it, it also helps. This isn't some sort of Jimny versus G-Wagon comparison. No. These are basically the same price. This is a bit pricier. Yes. But as near and make no difference. If, you, if you're about to invest in an off-road car between exactly. these two, it's not that You different. literally have to choose. However, I think there's incentives for the 4 by E. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That's possible. But either way, like they're similar enough that, that there's like there's like minor advantages and disadvantages. Yeah. And right now, if I was going to buy one, I would I would just get the Bronco because I think it's cooler looking. I like the spacious cabin. The spacious cabin is nice. It's got yeah. the, the independent front suspension, which obviously didn't hold me back at all in Not any all. of this. No. Like zero problems. I can still lock the diff. Can we look inside? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do the Bronco. Oh, you're I'm, okay. I'll show you. Yeah. It's pretty cool, actually. So I well, I took the other panel out last night. Went for a cruise. But what I have noticed is that, like, unlike the sunroof in most cars, which start behind your head, so they're pointless for you. This is you have so much sky. This is like a vintage convertible in here. It's really neat. It's very nice. Yeah, really and, I, and I'm looking up here, and I see you got the the auxiliary button. Yeah, I, I have six. How many do you have? Uh, <laughs> almost six. That's right. What's up? I got six. <laughs> I got four. Yeah, but like. What do you need six? For? Can you even name six things that you'd attach to this? Yeah, of course. Uh, well, uh, lights. That's uh, is that one thing. Oh yeah, lights. Yeah. A winch. Okay. Uh, light lights. You said that. So like other, a second winch for the rear. You need two winches. And then for and then more lights and then more lights and more lights. You need a lot of lights, James. I don't know yeah. if you know how much lights you, the, you need. You got the bar light. You get the bar light. You get the the, the spots and then Maybe the whole thing. Maybe some sort of siren. Oh yeah! Ooh, I I I, 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 I talk, talk to people. A speaker Megaphone. louder. Yes, a speaker speak, louder. <laughs> speaker louder. <laughs> Don't you start. All right. Okay. Here is the interior of the Bronco. More nice spacious. and spacious. Yeah. The seats are really wide and comfortable. Yes, they are. And also a whole lot of headroom. A ton of headroom. And right. It's still the same vertical rake on on all the stuff. Yes, there. the windscreen is very like vertical as well. The screen is massive. This is this is the big this is the big boy when you go at the top. How trims. do we get back to the home stuff? Well, it's because I'm I'm still in the, this drive mode. So if I switch to a normal mode, it will turn off the screen automatically. It well, it should anyway. And then. And then it's currently malfunctioning. I think it's cool that it says Bronco. Yeah, here. Yeah. yeah. We'll just ignore that. So it, there is a mount here, but we didn't use that today because we're using slightly more serious cameras. Than yes, it is a pretty cool mount, and there's a little like charging thing there. So if you wanted to plug in a dash cam or a GoPro to power it indefinitely, that's a great idea. I, I, I can't put that back in now. This is the top top trim, so it's got everything. What about the rear seats? You can check them out. Well, right. the seats in the Jeep are quite jump seaty. Right, yeah. so, so are these. But these, do these recline? Uh, I think they move a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're they? adjustable. Yeah. Yeah. Shades of gray. Shades of gray. There you go. Yeah, it's comfy back here. It is exactly right. Oh, you got the screen working. Is the screen working? Yeah, yeah. So I just uh, click the camera button here, and it will. You listening just... to Jimmy Buffett? I was listening how to Radio Margaritaville. I was enjoying it on the way here. I was. And how singing. have you got on with the with the infotainment and stuff? Uh, it's just the typical stuff you find, like an F-150 or whatever, right? It's, it's quite nice. It's intuitive. All of this is intuitive. I like the climate control. I like I like the gauge cluster. It's a bit, like, jammed in. It could have been maybe a little bit bigger. It's not very pretty to look at, but it tells you all of your information in a, in a very usable fashion, right? All the off-road stuff pops up automatically and has diagrams of where my diffs are locked and all that stuff, right? Which is all you need, right? I'm not looking for luxury. No. Right? I just want usability the and soft, comfort. comfortable seats are everything. The seats make a difference. The steering makes a huge difference on the road. I had no problem curving. Honestly, my only complaint about the interior is the fact that the headliner does creak. It, it clicks and it bips and it bops and it does a whole bunch of songs and I don't want to hear you it. You sound like a 95-year-old. <laughs> 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 Actually, that's a very different person. That's a very different person. Yes. Yeah, we, we don't talk about him anymore. We don't like him. He's a um, bastard. Can we go check out the Rubicon? <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 Ready? You also have a sun. Yeah, Ooh. I know, I know, I know. It's definitely easier. But is it a hard top? No. But it is as quiet on the highway as we found out. Because Look how far it goes it's back. It's an easy top is what it is. Look at that. 
Yeah, mine you can, can remove all the things. That is really cool, actually. That's awesome. And same thing with the and actual distance. Right? I've got speakers here. My speakers are in the C pillar, like yeah. a like a wakeboarding boat. Yeah, well, these <laughs> are cooler because they're oh, right here. That's pretty cool. Okay, also pretty vertical stuff. Yeah, very off roady. Smaller though. Smaller vibe in here. It, it is definitely tighter. Like I feel like this door is much closer to me and more vertical. But when we were going through the trees, that felt like an advantage. It was an advantage, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. But then this is Dodge's infotainment stuff, which I think is a bit behind Ford's. And this is the, I think this is the Ish. smaller screen. This in is ways, yeah, this is the smaller screen. I, I don't mind this. I find that the menu system is pretty easy but to navigate. It's slow, look, off-road, right? look at that. It's very laggy, yeah. Maybe yeah. lost, but never but stuck. But never stuck. Bet you we could prove them wrong and found the right trail. Um, okay, so. So last time we were in a Wrangler, it had the red leather. Yes. Red leather, yellow leather. And it was, it was quite a bit nicer. This this yeah. hide, this hides the fact that it's kind of a bit more upmarket in here. Because yeah, this is like leather trimmed. You can't really see if yeah. it's not a color. Um, no, my, I, I like auxiliary this. buttons. There's your auxiliary buttons down there. Your sway. Did you ever disconnect the sway bar? I did. You did. Okay. Yeah, I did. wanted as much sway as possible on that last bit. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. 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 It's cool. It's got all this stuff, and I like this has a proper like mechanical engagement for the uh, the transfer case. It just feels really off roady. I've always liked the Jeep interior. I think it's really neat. Yeah, I have no problem with kind it. Kind of half semi-digital. And yeah, like as a passenger off-roading, this is nice. And you've got that one. And this, like this is actually important because you get tossed around, you really do. There's not much more to say about this. Um, should, we do, really uh, changed. should we do a final conclusion? Yeah. Okay. Between the two, I'm with Thomas. The Bronco wins the day. Despite my championing of the Wrangler, the Bronco's extra style points, more spacious cabin, and ease of highway driving without it being any more expensive means that it would be my pick, even with the inferior fuel economy. That said, after a week with the Wrangler, it was on a rare list of vehicles that I didn't want to give back. It's charming. Jeep people wave at you, and just bumbling around town, it's actually fun. And the fact that there's a roaring V8 option now Hmm, I totally get it. But these two don't exist in a vacuum. The new Defender is a thing, and for basically the same price, it's far more refined, much nicer inside, smoother, quieter, and in many cases just as capable off-road. And like the Jeep, can also be had with a V8. However, reliability is a huge concern with the Defender, then I guess the same could be argued about the other two. The point is, at least in the world of charming off-road utility vehicles, we all have some pretty exciting new flavors to choose from. And we don't quite know what it's gonna be called yet, maybe Warthog or the Bronco Raptor, but it looks like there's an upcoming performance model of the Bronco on the way. Thanks for watching. Jeep keys, cool.